my soul, have your way in my mind, rain, Jesus rain, why, cause you're the king, king of Zion, Judah's lion, rain, Jesus rain. Come on, one more time. You want him to rain in your soul. Tell him, say, rain, Lord. Rain, Lord. I need you to rain. I need you to have your way. Rain, Jesus, rain. You're the king of Zion, Jews. Does lion reign? Jesus reign. Rain, 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 rain. Praise. Come on, give him praise. He deserves your praise today. He deserves your praise. He's been good to you. He woke you up this morning. You know who you are. You know where you are. You got dressed on your own today. You walked through the doors. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. We thank God. Amen. I should tell y'all, I, I, I should have a hard time making y'all be quiet than telling y'all to tell him thank you. Only you can tell your story. Has he bought you out? He haven't healed you no time in all your life. He haven't kept deaf doors off of you no time. You don't see where he rescued you out of the clutches of Satan no time. 
Oh, he's a great God. He's a great God. I'm never going to be ashamed to tell God what I feel about him. And if you ever give me the mic, you're going to have more trouble with me telling about that than anything I'll ever say. Because I know in the last 28 years, somewhere along the line, I could have been dead. I know a whole bunch of folks done died in 28 years. But here we are on this first day of October, 2023. Yet clapping our hands, yet opening our mouth, yet can't wait to see what God's going to do next. Amen. I can't even count all the blessings, Brother Jeffrey, that God have given me in the last 28 years. I'd have to stop. It might take me some months to write them down. I can't even just tell you what he done. Hey, man, he's been a good God. He's been so kind and so loving. We certainly respect him as sovereign Lord and Savior of all. And to his son, Jesus Christ, who secured our salvation, I'm so glad Jesus came because we get mercy, grace, and truth from, from him. Amen. And to the spirit of the Lord, well, most modern people call him, but we from the old school, Holy Ghost. I'm glad the paraclete came to keep me because I couldn't have kept myself. And I certainly couldn't remember everything God has said unto me. So he had to bring it back to my remembrance. Amen. To all of our elders on today, bless you. To the absence of Elder Ronald Ralph, amen. To all the men of the house, if you're in your place, amen. You won't think it's strange when I say to the priest of God, amen. We are the priests of our homes. And we should be in line with his promises. And we certainly praise God for the mothers on today and for all the missionaries, to the doorkeepers, to the Levites, the worshipers of the temple, and to you who are more precious than anything God ever created. That's the people of God. Amen. There is nothing on earth like the people of God. Birds can sing. The wind can rustle the leaves and trees. The wind can even make Halloween sounds and whistles that has a melodious sound to it. But only the people of God can bless God. Ah. Ah. Just think about it. Only the people of God can bless God. Amen. And we certainly give respect and honor today to the women's president, to District Missionary Ralph in her place. Amen. Amen. We certainly honor her on today. Just a few housekeeping uh, items real quick before I get carried away here. Uh, you all reminded me that I never did say what the pledge amount would be. The church has been in existence for 28 years. Now, I want you to just think about this. To make it easy for some of you all, especially you all who work, you have all month. Just sacrifice $10 a year for the church for 28 years. I know God's been better to you in one year than $10. So 28 years is only be, don't, don't kind of cross your face up. It's not, it's simple math. <laughs> 10 times 28 is 280. Yeah. Everybody's like, <laughs> it's not a mystery. $10 per year of its existence. 28 years will be $280. Now, if you want to round that out to 300, thank the Lord. If you want to give more than that, thank the Lord. But the men is pledging more than that because we're leaders. 
and you have all month to give it. Amen. So now we have that settled. I want you to know that today, how ironic it is, today is first Sunday. And 28 years ago, on the first Sunday, we started the ministry. I mean, just think about that. Think about that. Amen. I never would have thought we would have gone through what we've gone through. But we can say, despite all that, God has blessed us. Now, watch this. This is going to blow your mind. Uh, I think my math is right. Our holdings is more than 28. So in the last 28 years, God let us accumulate a million dollars more, a million and more a year for the last 28 years. Thank you. Think about that. That's not with interest. I'm just talking about just the actual dollars. So who would have ever thought, despite the climactic times, God was only not only subtracting, but he was multiplying on the other side. <laughs> and there's some other things coming down the pipe that's going to even add more to that. I mean, who, I never would have thought we'd have had holdings over $30 million. What's the matter, Mother Williams, that... She, she don't know what to do, y'all. She, she's gonna die. Don't feel bad, mother. Don't feel bad. I was talking to a preacher one day, and I was trying to help him. And I told him what it was going to cost for us to do this thing. And he just told me flat out, that's just numbers I can't deal with. He told me it was too many zeros. He actually did. But I want you all to know the God that you serve has all the money all the silver, all the gold. He said, I won't withhold nothing good from you if you walk upright before me. I live to see that. I live to see the ministry making many rich and having nothing. I've seen that come. Jesus. So when you're dealing in ministry, you never know what God's going to do. So that's your pledge for the rest of you all. $10 a year for 28 years. Amen. I think that's doable. I think God is worth more than the $10 you're giving him. Because in just 30 seconds, he'd give you $10. Amen. We won't even count the 28 years. Because some of us, I done seen it. You done been on, you've been bragging. Now, I know ain't none of y'all won the lottery because y'all couldn't have kept that. Y'all post about everything else, but if you'd have won the lottery, everybody in here would have known you won the lottery. <laughs> so we don't have no lottery winners, I know. Amen. But God, yeah, they're talking about not yet, but, but God is good. Amen. I just want you to know you have nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, because there are people now calling us, wanting us to help them create things. So he said he'll make you the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. What did he say about possessing? Y'all don't even remember the scripture, huh? Y'all may need to go look that up. Because it's right in line with what we're doing. He talks about possession. He talks about being rich. He talks about uh, 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 being a lender and not a borrower. Amen. And trust me, the, 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 the uh, human services portion of what we do have given away money to people who could not help us. And that's just a blessing. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about it took us down, but it kept coming. So God has been faithful to his word. So I want to report to you today before we get started. 28 years has been bends and turns in the road. But I have never faltered. I've never gotten up and didn't have nothing to give you. In 28 years, God has always sustained us and given us enriching messages for the soul. Amen. I continue to stay in his stead and in his 
hands and we'll be blessed. Amen. Now, we talked about five elements uh, about soul care and about spiritual health. You remember the first one was what? Praise and what? Praise and prayer. All you got to do is go over your notes. Praise and prayer. What was the next one? The word of God is life and it gives life. All right. What was the third one? Godly living is holiness. So you say you want to be holy, but you can't be holy unless you have godly lives. This installment on today is an is a anchor to everything we talked about because it's probably one of the least less menial, I'm trying to find a good word, issue that we don't deal with because we think it's nothing. But if you don't understand this component of it, all the rest of it has no place in your life. And that's Christian fellowship. Christian fellowship is vital. It's important. It's vital. It's, it's life-saving. In fact, that really comes, if, if there was any cliff notes, I could tell you the cliff notes is fellowship is God. Because if you don't have fellowship, according to the scripture, you don't have God. And I, I'll give you the, 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 the uh, argument portion on that because I know a lot of people don't think that fellowship is anything. But fellowship is vital to your holiness because the moment you don't understand and can't embrace fellowship, you're actually excluding God from your life. Right? He even talked about fellowship in a negative way that warns you about how vital fellowship is. He said, what fellowship do light have with darkness? Or what fellowship does Christ have with the devil? Right? There is none. So that, he's telling you how important fellowship is. You shouldn't align yourself with just anybody. And, and you should not have more fellowship with stuff and people more than saints. I'm getting less and less hand claps. And that's okay. Because I said in my preface of the message, it's one of the most menial things because we don't think it's important. But I just want to help you out today. And this is something that we're dealing with in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Go there with me real quick. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and verses 25 through 28 is Paul's final summation of the chapter of Thessalonians because he went through and gave us all the components of being holy and what it takes to be holy. See, don't let nobody fool you. It's not hard being holy. You have to use more effort going against God than staying with God. It's harder. It's more difficult doing what Satan wants you to do than doing what God wants you to do. Just think about it. What does Satan always want you to do? First thing he wants you to do is lie. And it gets so difficult lying, you lose track of how many lies you done told. You're in, you're, in, you're in fellowship with somebody and you lied so much. They said, wait, 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 wait. I thought you told me. I didn't say that. You just misheard what I said. You got to cover the lie with a lie. But see, with God, he tells you. Don't hide nothing from me. I already know what you're thinking. Just tell me what's really on your heart and I'll forgive you. What kind of, uh, what, what's so difficult about that? Nothing. But it's sometimes because we lose track of reality, we think that those little things that we've already been socialized to do is what God wants. And it's not really what God wants. It's really what the enemy wants so you won't be godly. 
First Thessalonians 5 and 25 says, and I'm reading from the, from the message because I want it to be clear enough because I have some points I need to cover. Friends, keep up your prayers for us. Greet all the Christians there with a holy embrace. 27, and make sure this letter gets read to all the brothers and sisters. Don't leave anyone out. 28, the amazing grace of Jesus Christ be with you. This is the living word from the living God in the message translation. After the corporate worship, like us today, has ended, the saints should minister to one another. It's difficult for us to come together and somebody doesn't have a need. Wherever there's humans, there are problems. Wherever there are people, there's a need for encouragement. We shouldn't be so busy, so enamored with what's coming next until we don't allow people to at least share what they're feeling. Could you think about that for one moment? Don't you feel safer sharing what you really feel if it's palatable with somebody you feel like would understand what you're saying than just Joe Blow walking next to you down the street? So when we come together in fellowship, God has always reminded us that this fellowship was good, but now that the fellowship is over, it's time to minister. It's time to serve. He told them that they should greet one another and seek to encourage one another. This is what Paul was saying way back then. When you see folks, just don't see them, but greet them. Let it even, just let it look like you're happy to see them. Don't just, yeah, all right. Hey, man, so-and-so waving at you. Yeah, I know, they, they ain't going to say that. They ain't saying that. I know y'all don't do that. I'm just using examples that I've seen before. So I'm not talking about y'all. Don't get upset. Don't get quiet. Yeah, I should have got some amens on that. Some of y'all must have seen that somewhere. Right? After church, we shouldn't escape like we've been in prison. Or run like rats or bugs leaving a sinking ship. Well, my God, we just been in the presence of God. And you mean to tell me you are in that big a hurry to leave this sanctimonious place to go out to the world where it's crazy? Let me just look at your neighbor and say, you ought to hang out just a little bit. We're not like them folks. We be sinking. No, we're not. We're not sinking. We ain't got to run. Sister London, we just brought heaven down. Don't you want to just bask in it for just a little bit? Because you know when you go to work, you already can't stand it. Stay here and just marinate. <laughs> you may not be sick of the job by Sunday night. You know, you know when you get about 7 something, you say, oh, God, I got to get up tomorrow. How about, to, how about yeah. see, 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 you should have got just a little bit more for Sister Skookum before you left. Maybe just one more hug would have took care of that. I'm talking about fellowship. I'm talking about fellowship. Fellowship is a part of worship. Why do you think, now, now wait, wait, hold on a minute. I need to take a survey. How many of y'all really believe the Bible is the only infallible, holy, and inspired word of God? Let me see your hand. Okay. 
So if God wrote that in the Bible thousands of years ago, do you think it's applicable today? Fellowship is part of worship. And let me show you how the disconnect works. Because our fellowship is so shallow with God, we can't see the connection while we're here worshiping God. We're actually trying to fellowship. And this is why it's so hard to fellowship with folk, because you don't believe you're fellowshipping with God. You just believe you just came to, and says, Angie going to sing, and Gabriel going to play this, and we're going to do that, and stuff going to get up, and oh, yeah, we'll be gone from here before 12 o'clock, so it ain't no big deal. <laughs> when you don't realize the first thing this morning in the service, we send in Judah first because we want you to be connected to God. So when I talk to you, <laughs> the fellowship would have put you so far in front Till I can say some things and it won't quite cut you like it would cut you. Why? Because of fellowship. Fellowship is worship, y'all. If we come in here for praise and worship one day and, and the Lord says to all of us, today your worship is going to either get you in or keep you out. What kind of worship would you put forth? Oh, we ain't seen wor- we ain't seen worship yet, have we? Well, every time you come, your worship is going to make you or break you. Just think about this. In our society now, we're cold. We come to church cold. We at home cold. We cold. We're some cold folks. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Think about that for a moment. We can see stuff on the news that don't even bother us. We saints. Somebody could be getting put out, and you go on in there and fix your smoothie. You ain't think about it. They could tell you in Syria, 40,000 people died in less than an hour because of the flood. You ain't stopped one time to ask, Lord, have mercy. We're just some cold folks. Unless it's happening to us. Now, if that was happening to us, listen, if that was happening to us, I, I don't have enough room on the voicemail <laughs> for some of our calls. But, 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 but you know, what all I'm trying to say is the fabric of humanity has a certain decorum that goes with life. We should never, as saints, celebrate or be non-celebrative when things come. There's a time to celebrate, and there's really a time to cry. When other folks crying, it should be our time to cry. I mean, I don't know if you've been around people long enough, they can cry, and I'm telling you. I've done funerals, and it was fine until I got down there, and, what, and the family started coming by crying, and I, I'm like, I don't even know them. But it's something about fellowship. It's something about togetherness that keeps us in a spirit where God can use us. Not only are we cold, but we're just separated. No, I ain't moving over there because too many saints live over there. I don't want to be, I want nobody coming over my house. Man, they got some, some, what's the address? Wait a minute, wait, 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 let me think, wait a minute. Oh, no, no, that's only a couple blocks away from, I'm going to live way over there, so if they come to my house, they have to want to buy, they have to want to see me, I'm going to live way over there. It's the truth. It's the truth. Because I done been in conversation with some of us. We don't move in certain places, we don't do certain things, because we don't want to be a part. You know, I see them on Sunday, that's enough. 
I don't want to see him Monday. Don't want to see him Tuesday, Wednesday, and God knows I don't want to see him Friday because I got some stuff I need to be doing. And I ain't, nobody holding up my, you know. Sometimes we're even strangers to one another. I was teasing my little friend back there. She came to church last week, and I already know, I already know, she had some uh, things she had to do was vital. But I was teasing her because I hadn't seen her in so long. And I looked at her and I said, hi, my name is Pastor Ruff. What's your name? She said, I'm a member here. I said, really? When did you become a member? I ain't seen you. In. <laughs> so we've been joking back and forth about that. But trust me when I tell you, sometimes we are strangers to one another. We're in the fellowship. Now, I know things happen, but come on, y'all. This is not normal. Cold, separated, and strangers. And we say we love the same God. And we're going to the same heaven. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've been doing some praying and thinking, and I don't care some. Some thoughts that somebody better answer before I die. Y'all want to hear some of them? I asked the question. Oh, okay. Because I don't want to bore you if y'all don't want to hear what I got to say. What a surprise it's going to be for all these folk can't stand certain groups. And they get to the gate. And hoping only all the folk look like them going to be there. You know what I wonder sometimes? Are they going to say, forget it, I don't want to come here, just send me to hell? Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. The people like that got their own heaven, so we ain't going to be there anyway. That sounds crazy, don't it? Because it's only one God. It's only one spirit. If you had the spirit of God and I had the spirit of God, it ain't, it ain't seven different spirits. It's only one. So we should have the same care for one another. We should have the same thoughts. They sure not going to be seven or uh, twelve different hells. Because that's the only place in the Bible that said it has enlarged itself without measure. Everything in the Bible got. So that means to me, and I'm just saying to me, must be a whole bunch of more folks going there than going to the place that's measured. Now, this is my thought. I, you know, I'm not trying to be a theologian. I just, you know, sometimes I just go, hmm. Wonder how is that gonna work? Oh, what's gonna happen? And just frankly, that's really not holy behavior. That's all. Just putting it nicely. Cold, separated, and being strangers to one another is just not godly. It's just not. I'll prove it to you. That's not even how the church started. <laughs> if we want our church and church is to be the very mirror of what God started, we have to go back to the authentic or the Genesis of what church was. See, we're trying to be something that has never been authorized by God. Now, you can get a whole bunch of folks together, but if you don't have the right fellowship spirit, then God and only God is the one that can accept or reject your effort. I mean, think about this from the beginning. 
when he wanted sacrifices and wanted offerings given, he rejected Cain's offering because he had the wrong spirit. He just tried to throw God something. When God gave him specific instructions on the sacrifice, I want this, that, and that. What did he do? He just gathered something together and throwed it at God and act like God's supposed to accept it. And guess what happened? His church ended on his sacrifice. But Abel's sacrifice, even though he was dead, lived on. So when you have the right spirit and do what God wants, the enemy could try to kill you if he wants to, but it's not going to stop your sacrifice. <laughs> Point in case, you can read this when you get a chance, but I, I want to read it now for, for, for information's sake. Acts 2, 41 and 42. And I want to read it in the NLT. I want you to, I want you to hear this. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 and all. Just think about this. Them people were so dedicated to what the pastor was preaching. Three, they, had a, they had a membership drive in one day for 2,000 folk. Do you think our church is lacking something? I do. If the church started adding members daily by the thousands, Something must be wrong, right? Verse 42, and all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. And to sharing in meals, even including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And the reason why I know this is vital, because when I was a little boy, it wasn't a strange thing for church to be out that Thursday or that Friday night and folks would go to somebody's house. And they would be there in fellowship. Some would be drinking coffee. Some would be eating uh, tea cakes. Somebody would have a donut. Somebody may have a sandwich. And they would sit there and laugh and talk, and they would find out when somebody needed something, they wouldn't even put it on Facebook. They would whisper to somebody next to them that they could trust and say, hey, I just found our sister so-and-so and them don't have no money to pay the light bill. How much you got, girl? Well, I got $20. Well, we need about 40 more. I got 13. Let's see if we can get seven more dollars. And they'll help that sister out. Nobody would know it. And then when you looked up, it looked as though nobody never had a problem. Folks needed shoes and clothes. They do the same thing. Girl, what you got in your closet? Well, I got some dresses I ain't worn in a while. I, I'm going to get them cleaned and pressed. You think she can wear? What size she wear? She wear a seven. Yeah, I got an eight. But, you know, we could, we, uh, Sister Sally is a seamstress. She could take it up in the side. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Because they had all things in common. They believed what the Bible said. They believed what the pastor was saying. And they wouldn't let another saint go down and everybody see it. Go down to verse 45. It said they sold their property. Uh, good luck. We're not going to sell a hamburger. We sure ain't going to sell our property. And their possessions. And shared the money with those in need. Where is that church at? I want to join it. Verse 46. They worshiped together at the temple each day. Met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Verse 47. And all while they were praising God and enjoying the goodwill of the people. Each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were to be saved. Where's that 
church at? That's the first thing they're going to say. And it'll be on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. What's that other one you got? Meta? What's the other one? Come on, give me some more mediums. I know I, I'm just limited. No, that ain't enough. Because if I say what I'm getting ready to say, it'll be on all the mediums before I can get home. Child, you should, I don't know, Pastor Rev slipping. He told us to sell what we got so we could do X, Y, Z. What you think about that? Child, I think you better, I think you better find you another church home. Anytime a preacher asks you to sell stuff and, and help with your own money, child, that's your money. You know how hard you to work for that? Y'all gonna give me some more mediums or is it just, just them three? You see that though? The preacher told him, listen, we need X, Y, Z. I'll help you, Pastor. And they did it and they fellowshiped and God blessed every day. So what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that, you know, fellowship is vital. You lose your blessings. I know you're blessed. But you ain't blessed like you can be. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It haven't even got down in the depths of you what I got prepared for you. Your mind can't even conceive what I want to do for you. Well, here go Paul. He ended with another reminder that the word of God is the most important thing in the local church. The word of God, then fellowship. The word must govern and conduct and guide our lives. The word. Not what the latest trend is. Not what other folk is doing. Could I share with you, God may be telling you to do something he ain't never told nobody else in the whole world. And you sitting up trying to keep up with so-so. And God got you on a whole nother trajectory. And then you wondering why you stuck. Because if you don't, if you don't allow God to lead and guide you in the way he wants you, you never get to where you're going. <clears throat> we are to read the word of God first and foremost personally. That's why Bible study and different things are important to read it before you get before the preacher so it won't sound foreign to you. I should be able to quote verses to you because you read the word of God. You should pick up where I am and just start quoting them back. When I was coming up in the church and my pastor, Bishop Johnson, would quote scripture, trust me. We'd be right there quoting them right back. Because you ought to read the God, the word of God first personally. Don't wait for the preacher to put the word in you. Right. Study to show thyself approved. A workman. You don't need to be ashamed. No, you need to know where to come in and go out in the word. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And after we read the word, we need to hear the word in the fellowship of the local church. Why? It, you know why it's important? Because the one experience balances the other. Shouldn't you, shouldn't you be alert enough to know when I'm not quoting the Bible right? I'm just telling y'all anything. And y'all say, that's right, Pastor. You shall know the truth, 
And if you don't repeat it right, we're supposed to slap you. Amen, Pastor. You have not because you ain't never gave me nothing. Amen, Pastor. You don't supposed to be blind. Let me just tell you anything. Lord, Pastor Ruff said so and so. Lord, I I I don't I ain't fighting him, but I need you to help me. I don't believe it, Lord. Show me, prove it to me. God will come do it. I didn't seen it too many times. You should know the word of God just like I do. I'm not telling you to know the whole Bible because I don't know the whole Bible. But I know the part I know. You, and you should be able to authenticate what I'm saying. Yes. Trust me, this is not a cult. I'm not Jesus. I still have somebody I have to answer to. Romans 14 and 7. This should knock her loose. Everybody who wants to be separated. In the NLT, for we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. Verse 8, if we live, it's to honor the Lord. And if we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. That, listen, ain't nobody here no Lone Ranger. <laughs> I know you, I know, listen, listen, trust me, I done been around for long enough. Folks think they are their own everything. I don't care how many posters you got propping up your little stuff. You're going to die like everybody else. And you're going to meet God like everybody else. <laughs> and you're going to get just what you deserve like everybody else. Because he is supreme. He is Lord of Lords. He is all sufficient. Not the preacher. I'm not even the shepherd of this church. I'm the under shepherd. Jesus is the Lord and shepherd of the church. And, 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 you, and, you, and, you, and you ought to want somebody who understands that leading you. Instead of just throwing lies to you. And the Bible said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He doesn't say the Lord is my shepherd and I'm supposed to get whatever y'all got. That ain't the Bible, is it, Sister Sellers? See what I'm saying? We should know that. Yes. You, listen, if we, if we start out lying and pretending that's all we're going to be all our life, when will the truth come in? The truth's got to rule and govern us, y'all. It's got to. First Epistle John 1 and 7. You can read it when you get a chance. I'm just going to read it to you. Because I promised I was going to prove to you by the Bible how vital fellowship is. But if we are living in the light, as God is the light. Who's the light? God. God's the light. So he said, if we are living in the light as God is the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, just a second here, just a second, I want you to... I want you to, let's, let's, let's do what we used to do in English. You know, when you read it backwards, if it's 
grammatically correct, it should make sense. Uh, Y'all didn't know that in English? Whenever you write a paragraph, if it makes sense going this way, Oh, well, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. You want to try it? Come on, let's try it. Let's try it. Ready? Sin, all from us, cleanses Christ Jesus, Lord of what? Of the blood. Fellowship, that's oneness of light. This in walk and obey we when another one with fellowship God with connection is there safety is there fellowship I know you understand that so if you look at that it's telling you if you want your sins cleansed Stay in fellowship. See, the reason why a lot of times we in sin, it ain't because we smoking dope. Or getting high or drinking. It's because we cold, separated, and out of fellowship. Why would Paul or should I say, why would God let Paul hear the revelation and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin? Now, if you look at that, if you look at that from the subject, the blood of Jesus has nothing to do with fellowship when you read it. Just read it. It talks about God as the light. And if you in the light, like God, we have fellowship. But why would he add the clause? And the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you. It was added because that's the anchor of the whole thought. If you stay in fellowship and walk in the light, it's less chances you're going to walk around in sin. <laughs> that's what it's saying. So what is what's he say? In fellowship, there is safety. In fellowship, there is a connection with God. And in fellowship, we are together. One another. We're together. When we obey and walk in this light of oneness, that's fellowship. That's something easy to do. And then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. I don't know about you, but I, I want to be cleansed from sin. I'm the pastor of the church, and I need to be cleansed from sin. If I don't have no fellowship with y'all, y'all don't have no fellowship with me, then what kind of preaching is going to be going on? You know what y'all going to be doing? Yawning. Bored. Tired. Sitting there asleep. Looking at the clock, hoping it's hurry up and be over. Think about that. And that's not abnormal. You know why that's not abnormal? Because that's the human stain. If you think I'm telling a story, it can only be two of y'all in the house. Don't have no fellowship. How long is the day? Woo! You could be in the office, just three of y'all. Don't have nothing to do with them other ones. You're going to be sitting there mad, bored, hating your job, and they're going to be laughing, going to break, eating lunch, going places. 
Because they, <laughs> they in fellowship. You're the only one sitting there. Don't want to have nothing to do with nobody else. It's on three of y'all. Can't you see when you're not in fellowship, it causes stress and anguish on you. And you wonder what's going on. A lot of times it's just because you just ain't, you, you know, you, you're, not in, you know, you're not where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Fellowship is vital. Fellowship promotes holiness. Fellowship is something God himself does in heaven with the whole host. Thank you, my sister. Them folk up, the, those beings up there are on purpose praising and worshiping and magnifying God. It does not end. Just think about that. Could you imagine what kind of place that is? All because God created fellowship. The only reason why Satan got kicked out he was tired of folks telling God how great he was. And he thought he could do better than what God was doing. And I say this often, but I don't think y'all really hear what I'm saying. If you could be in heaven, in the most holiest place in the world that exists, and you get kicked out because you're not right, you can go to hell anywhere. Think about it. Think about it. He, he was in the place where all of us want to be and couldn't stay. All because he had the wrong spirit. So why did God do that? He did that to prove to us that you could be around it, you could be in front of him, but if your spirit ain't right, you can get the same treatment. So that's a warning to all of us. That's why I say fellowship is, in, is vital because that's God. He is the light. When we walk in the light, in other words, when you have the right spirit that God is wanting us to have, you don't have no problem fellowshipping. Right. <laughs> we can see one another downtown. Folk ought to see us acting toward each other like we don't act with everybody else. Oh, that's Brother Joe over there. Hey, wait a minute, Brother Joe. Brother Joe could be getting ready to catch the bus. He'll stop. Say, hey, I got to get, no, I'll give you a ride. He, he won't even get on the bus. Why? They value fellowship, value one another. Saints, it's time for us. If we're going to say we're holy and we're walking with God, we have to understand how vital fellowship is. And there's another scripture I can give you that, that he gives us that really cements what we're doing. He tells us to get together, all of us, as often as possible, and admonish one another. In other words, encourage one another as you see the day approaching. Right? We do that because it keeps everybody anchored. And if there is a problem, the problem won't be so bad till we can't help the person. You know, the worst thing that could happen to us, and I, I mean, I, I tell my children all the time, don't wait till the folks tell you you got to tell tomorrow. You've been getting this letter how long? And now you want me to stop, drop, and empty everything I got to save you tomorrow? And you knew this months ago? But see, had we been in, had you been honest, had you just said, you know, the bottom is falling out, I need X, Y, Z, 
Uh, well, maybe we can get some other, other cavalry folks to help, right? But it's difficult to get people out of jams overnight. That's why fellowship is so important. We ought to be close enough to one another. If there is a problem, we should be able to say it without feeling like our name is going to be on the curtain of the community. <laughs> All right, come on, let's bless the Lord. I'm done, I'm done. Come on, bless the Lord, come on.